Perfect blue skies greeted Spain and France for their semi-final in the men's five-a-side at the Riverbank Arena. Both teams had yet to taste defeat in the competition. The opening exchanges were even until Le Bleu's number 10, Arno Aya, showed wonderful skill to take out three Spanish players before firing home. Breathtaking footwork from the French number 10. Leading at the break, France wrapped up the win in the second half. Again, it was that man Aya with another stunning finish, keeping his composure under pressure before finishing neatly into the bottom left-hand corner of the net. France moving through to the gold medal match in style. And cue wild celebrations for the French contingent inside the stadium. The French would face a nervous wait to find out who they would face in the final as South American rivals Brazil took on Argentina. Brazil had the opening chance of the match. Jefferson Concalves looked lively up front, only his shot was repelled. Argentina were equally impressive. Great footwork by Marcel Panizza. Again, his effort repelled. So the game would finish goalless, which meant a penalty shootout. Luis Sakayan of Argentina saw his first spot kick saved. Up stepped his Brazilian counterpart, Severino da Silva, who scored his. Both sides missed their next penalties, and it meant Argentina had to score theirs to win, but Froilan Padilla missed. Brazil going through in a stunning shootout win. There was just one point between the first and second ranked shooters going into the final of the women's R8 50 meter rifle three positions. In the final, competitors only shoot in the standing position, which means they must fully support the weight of their firearm. Zhang Kuiping of China was in first position ahead of her compatriot Dang Shibei, who scored 576.23, exactly the same as Veronika Vadovakova of Slovakia. With a nine-point lead over the next nearest competitor, Li Yunri of Korea, this final was always likely to be a tale of three musketeers. Kuiping got off to a surprisingly poor start with a shot of 8.8, .8 two points lower than Vadovakova, who briefly leapt into first place. The Slovak has been desperate for a medal at these games, so whether through nerves or Kuiping's superior firepower, she dipped down to third, where she remained to claim a nevertheless cherished bronze medal. Gold went to Kuiping and Dang picked up silver. The last shooting event of the 2012 Paralympic Games was the mixed P4 50 meter pistol SH1. Defending champion Park Sekyung of Korea looked invincible from the start. He entered the final six points ahead of his nearest rival from the qualification round where three women competed but none got through. There was drama elsewhere on the range in the first round when strong Chinese contender Ru Jiechiri suffered a gun malfunction. He was unable to repair the gun in the allotted three minutes and had the round forfeited. Park's gold was certain unless he lost his nerve, which he didn't. But the silver and bronze medals were hotly contended by Kohan Yamach of Turkey and Sergei Malyshev of Russia, who swapped positions over several rounds. In the end, neither was victorious, losing out to Ni Hedong of China who came from behind to slip into third place behind Valery Ponomarenko of Russia. So in the mixed P4 50 meter pistol final, Park Sekyung took gold, silver went to Valery Ponomarenko and Ni Hedong won bronze. The Paralympic event of Boccia provides a true test of an athlete's technique, nerve and ability to perform under pressure. Players win points for getting their balls closest to the white ball known as the jack. This afternoon's session at the XL Centre consisted of round of eight matches and quarter finals in the mixed individual class. We start with a nail-biting quarter-final match in the BC4 class between Brazil's Jose Dirchu Pinto against Peter Maguire from Great Britain. The tension was apparent throughout as the men exchanged points and it ended 3-3, so a tie-break ensued. And it was Brazil that triumphed and Pinto heads into the semi-final. 
Next up, Great Britain's Nigel Murray against Kai Jong of China. Murray was the favourite coming into this match as he's the world number one in the BC2 class and he'd won gold at Sydney 2000 Paralympic Games in the individual and team events. But his quest for another gold ended today when Jong expertly chipped away consistently with single scores and progressed into the semi-final by three points to one. Norwegian Roger Andelin has been playing boccia since 1986 and London is his fifth Paralympics. And this match in the BC1 class against Portugal's João Fernandes proved to be a real test. And he had to draw on all of that experience to come through. The match ended three apiece and went to a tie-break. Andelin was victorious and he progresses into the semi-final. The players enjoyed a party atmosphere in the arena today as Jose Carlos Chagas de Oliveira faced Mayong Su Kim in another quarter-final of the BC1 class. The Brazilian found his groove early on and kept posting twos and threes to eventually dominate the South Korean and win by seven points to one. Tomorrow's session will host more quarter and semi-finals as well as playoffs for places five to eight. The conclusion of the sailing at Weymouth and Portland and weather conditions meant the cancellation of day eight sailing, so the results counted from race ten. And it was Thierry Schmitter of the Netherlands claiming the bronze medal, Heigo Kroger of Germany with the silver and the gold and a day to savour for Great Britain's Helena Lucas. Helena began sailing at the age of eight. To the victory ceremony for the two-person keelboat and Great Britain claiming the bronze medal. The silver goes to the USA, the defending champions from Beijing, Nick Scandone and Maureen McKinnon-Tucker. But the gold goes to Australia, Daniel Fitzgibbon and Rachel Cox going one better than their silver in Beijing. And finally to the three-person keelboat victory ceremony, Norway settled for the bronze. The defending champions from Beijing, Germany settled for the silver this time. Kroker, Meinke and Robert Prem but the gold goes to the Netherlands, Judo Hessels, Marcel van den Veen and Misha Rossen. Copper box, penultimate day of competition and it is the semi-finals. It's China versus Finland in the women's competition. Katja Heikkinen gets through the defence of the Chinese. That's 1-0 to Finland. They're celebrating at the moment but it's a bit early. Look at this bouncing ball from Wang Shasha. She makes it one all. And smiles and a little shout of encouragement from the crowd. Another bouncing ball over the defence. That's 2-1. Overall, the Chinese win by four goals to one and they go into the finals tomorrow. Second semi-final then and it's Sweden versus Japan. Europe versus Asia, there's lots of smiles. I wonder who will be smiling at the end of this one. Akiko Adachi for Japan gets a penalty into the corner. It's 1-0 to Japan and they're celebrating in the crowd. It's Josephine Jamistar for Sweden that levels things up. One all and that is the end of regular time. We're now into the penalty shootout. The coaches away so that they're not being heard and a penalty there taken by the Japanese Masai Komiya. That makes it 4-3 to Japan. They need this one and oh, it's off the post and away and Japan will celebrate. They have won it by 4-3. They go through to the final against China. And now to the men's semi-final, it's Turkey versus Finland. Turkey have played brilliantly. They've won four and drawn one. And now it's very, very important. Matila for Finland scores a cracker there. It's 1-0 and the Finns really, really have big ambitions here. Turkey struggling a little bit. Here's another one. It's a penalty and that is the second one for Matila. It's the second one for Finland and they have beaten Turkey. They go through to the final tomorrow and that is big celebration. Finland have beaten them 2-0. Tekin Duzgun of Turkey shows tremendous sportsmanship in applauding the Finns. Now the second semi-final of the men's event is Brazil versus Lithuania. Lithuania really as the world champions ought to be favourites here but Brazil have been showing fantastic form. And that one, first one from Jenrik Pavliukinek 
really shows that uh, Lithuania are a force to be reckoned with. Another showing this time from Marquez. He levels things up at one all. This is going to be really, really tight. Just look at the Brazilian supporters there. And another big one, and it's in the corner. That is fantastic from Maciel Almeida. That's 2-1, and Brazil have beaten Lithuania. Two goals to one. Just look at the celebrations. They go through to the final against Finland tomorrow. Medals were awarded for wheelchair fencing in both Category A and B of men's individual sabre. In Category A, the bronze medal bout was contested by world number two, Chan Wing Kin of Hong Kong and Poland's Radislav Stanchuk, and it was Chan who prevailed, beating the experienced pole 15-9. China were guaranteed gold, with the final being between 2011 world champion Chen Yi Jun and Beijing silver medalist Tian Jian Quan. Tian beat world number one Roman Noble in the prelims and progressed all the way to the final relatively untroubled. Chen had lost twice early on, but won comfortably in both his quarter-final and semi-final and was looking to go one better than the silver he'd already won in the foil on the opening day. And Chen looked set to do just that after racing into a 7-0 lead, but was pegged back by Tian at 8-7 before taking control once more to win 15-12. So Chen's now Olympic as well as world champion. Teammate Tian takes silver, with Chan winning bronze for Hong Kong. In the bronze medal bout of category B, Alessio Sari of Italy took on Russia's Marat Yusupov, who won bronze at last year's world championships. But the Italian proved too hot to handle, winning 15-7, and you could see what it meant. Frenchman Marc-André Crater and Poland's Grzegorz Pluta met in a final that few would have predicted. The two fencers met in the preliminary stage with Pluta winning 5-3. World number three Crater took an early lead 6-3 but Pluta wasn't phased and levelled up at 7-all. The 37-year-old then produced a memorable sequence of points to win eight of the next nine and take gold 15-8. So gold for Poland and Pluta was silver going to Frenchman Crater and bronze for Alessio Sarri of Italy. Sweden against Australia in wheelchair rugby. The Australians a formidable outfit with Riley Batt in their ranks. He was to demonstrate why he's regarded as arguably the world's best player. He was to score 30 goals against the European champions, half his side's total. Australia never looked in danger of losing this group game. Final score Sweden 47, Australia 60. Canada played Belgium in their second pool game. Canada in black have strength in depth, a factor which helped them run out winners here. The goals were spread around the team, whereas Belgium relied heavily on the scoring ability of young Lars Mertens. His 24 goals weren't enough as Canada eased to victory. Final score, Canada 58, Belgium 50. The encounter between Great Britain and France turned out to be extremely close. The hosts in blue were keen to put on a good show for the home crowd. France had a danger man in Rihad Salem. Closing him down was going to be key for Great Britain. The tactics paid off as Britain edged ahead in the closing stages. Final score, Great Britain 57, France 50. World number two, Japan's Shingo Kunieda took on Ronald Vink of the Netherlands in the wheelchair tennis men's singles at Eton Manor. The Japanese broke early in the first to set him on his way to a 6-2 win. It was much the same in the second as Kunieda broke the Dutch world number four's serve in the fourth game and repeated the scoreline of the first set. Final score, two sets to love to Kunieda, 6-2, 6-2. In the quad singles, there was an all-Israeli affair between world number two, Noam Goshoni and Shraga Weinberg, who appeared together in the doubles. It was a very one-sided match as Goshoni never dropped a game. Yeah, yeah. 
Mr. Match Gershali. Final scored two sets to love, six love, six love. It was another one country contest in the other quad singles semi final, a game between doubles partners David Wagner and Nicholas Taylor. Wagner took advantage of his in depth knowledge of his playing partner's game to win the match two sets to love, 6 2, 6 1, to set himself up with a final place against the Israeli Noam Gershoni. In the women's singles bronze medal match, the Netherlands' Jeske Griffio and took on Germany's Sabine Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock went two up in the first, but the Dutch woman pulled back and managed to take the set 6 2. The second set was a much more drawn out affair, ending in a tie break, which went to 8 6 to Griffey Owen. Final score two sets to love, 6 2, 7 6. In the women's doubles, Great Britain's Lucy Schuker and Jordan Wiley took on Annick Van Koot and Jiska Griffey Owen, who had earlier competed in the women's singles bronze match. Schuker and Wiley took a 3 1 lead in the first before the Dutch pairing came back to take the set 6 4. Griffione and Van Koot went ahead in the second, only for the British pair to mount a spirited comeback in the middle of the set. It wasn't enough, though, as the Dutch took the set 6-3. Final score 6-4, 6-3, and a place in the final against compatriots Buis and Vergeer. Australia played the United States in the semi-finals of the women's wheelchair basketball. The USA winners of the gold medal at the last two Paralympic Games. There was to be no repeat this time, as Australia gained revenge for their defeat by the USA at the same stage four years ago. A scrappy game was to produce a dramatic finish. The teams were tied at the end of a tight first half. A run of ten points without reply put Australia in control. Amazingly, they were to score only two points in the last quarter, but still win. The USA staged a frantic fight back. In the last minute, Desi Miller took the USA to within a point of their rivals. Then, with a second to go, Rose Holloman missed from close range. Australia celebrated a famous win and could look forward to the final. Final score, Australia 40, the USA 39. An all-European tie between the Netherlands and Germany in the women's semi-final. Germany raced into a 10-point lead, yet by half-time they'd been overtaken by a much-improved Dutch side. However, Germany showed terrific character, desperate to maintain their unbeaten record. The Netherlands refused to give up and regain the lead deep into the match. This was another thrilling finish, and Germany held on to set up a clash with Australia in the final. Final score, the Netherlands 46, Germany 49. Defending champions Australia met the United States for a place in the final of the men's wheelchair basketball. It's 24 years since the USA reached the final, and the wait must go on. Australia won the meeting between the teams in the group stages and once again they maintain their grip over their long-standing rivals. The USA struggled to contain an Australian attack that had threats all over the court. Australia through to the final again. Final score, Australia 72, the United States 63. After the disappointment of failing to reach the semi-finals, China and Egypt had to battle it out in the classification matches. In a seesaw battle, the Egyptians led two sets to one, but China showed great resolve to come back and square up the contest at 2-2 to send it into a first of 15 deciding set. In that set, the Egyptians raced ahead, but then almost blew it. They needed no fewer than seven match points to finally clinch it 15-11. So they go into the fifth place match while China are left to battle for seventh.
The first of the semi-finals saw Athens champions and Beijing runners-up Bosnia-Herzegovina up against Germany, who were seeking their first medal since winning bronze in 1992. The unbeaten Germans had enjoyed a great competition, but this was one bridge too many, as Bosnia took the opening set 25-19. And after reaching the last three finals, they were in no mood to miss out on the London showpiece, as they won the second as well, 25-20. The agony got worse for the Germans in the third, as they were brushed aside 25-14, as Bosnia reached a fourth successive final with a surprisingly one-sided victory. Great Britain were on court for the second time today. After losing their quarter-final against Iran, they fought out a classification tie against Brazil but it ended in defeat again as the South Americans cleaned up in straight sets. There was an evening session full of track finals in the Olympic Stadium on day eight of these Paralympic Games. In the final of the men's 400 meters T12 classification, there were four athletes competing, only Gerard Descarrega of Spain in lane one was competing without a guide runner. In the home straight, two athletes pulled away. Hilton Langenhoven of South Africa and Mahmoud Haldi of Tunisia. But Haldi was the stronger in the last few metres. His time of 48.52 seconds, a new world record, one tenth of a second faster than the previous best, which had stood for more than 10 years. The final of the men's 200 metres T36 classification featured the world and Paralympic record holder So Wai Wei of China in lane two. He'd set both of those records at the last Paralympics in Beijing. This was a close finish between Ben Rushgrove, Roman Pavlik and So. And it all came down to the dip at the line. Pavlik timed his lunch to perfection to win in 24.70 seconds, just ahead of So, with Rushgrove in third. All three medalists ran faster than they ever had before in the final. In the final of the women's 200 metres T12 classification, there were two athletes who had set equal world and Paralympic records in the heats. Asya El Hanouni of France in lane five and Zhu Daqing of China in lane three. They'd both gone 24.80 seconds in the morning session and they both ran even quicker in this race. El Hanouni was in fourth place coming off the bend but watch her surge through the field along with her guide Gauthier Simone. Victory for El Hanouni in a new world record time of 24.46 seconds. Zhu Guohua of China set a new Asian record in second place, with Zhu Daqing in third. The final of the men's 800 meters T36 classification pitted Paralympic record holder Artem Arefyev and world record holder Evgeny Shvetkov against each other. They both come from Russia and with 200 metres to go, they were behind the British athlete Paul Blake, but Shvetkov and Arefiev both powered through towards the end. The last few metres saw Shvetkov come away. He just managed to dip under the Paralympic record and was just outside his own world record. In the women's 200 metres T34 classification final, Hannah Cockroft of Great Britain was the athlete to beat. She had set a new Paralympic record in qualifying, 33.20 seconds, and she'd already broken the world record this year. Cockroft powered through to lower the Paralympic record once again, going 1.3 seconds faster than she had in the heats. Her winning time rounded up to 31.90 seconds. The other medals went to athletes from the Netherlands. Amy Siemens was second in 34.16, Desiree Franken third in 34.85. In the women's 200 metres T38 classification final, Ina Strishak of Ukraine was running in lane seven. She set the world record for this event at the last Paralympics in Beijing, but the race was dominated by Zhen Shunfei of China. She broke the world record by more than four tenths of a second in this final, winning in 27.39 seconds. 
Goncharova in second place was only one one hundredth of a second outside the previous world record, the bronze going to Strishak. The final of the men's 100 metres T46 classification proved to me dramatic. Johansson Nascimento of Brazil pulled up after 40 metres with an injury. That allowed Zhao Zhu of China to win a close finish, just holding off Raciel Gonzalez Isadoria of Cuba. The bronze medal went to Ola Obidagon of Great Britain. Zhao's time set a new Asian record, 11.05 seconds. Only one woman has ever run sub-12 seconds for the 100 metres in the T13 class, and she was in lane four for the final, Omara Durand of Cuba. She powered away in the middle part of this race. A strong performance for Durand. Her winning time rounded down to 12 seconds exactly, just one one-hundredth slower than her world record, but a Paralympic record nevertheless. The silver medal went to Isel Hayes of South Africa and the bronze to Nantanin Keita of France. There were four realistic contenders for the gold medal in the men's 200 metres T35 classification final. Yuri Saruk of Ukraine in lane four was the world record holder. He ran the best bend coming away from the field. Fu Xin Han of China had the best finish to take the silver medal and Hernan Barreto broke the South American record in third place with 26.59. In the final of the men's 800 metres T54 classification, Great Britain's David Weir was aiming for a third gold medal at these games. He would face stiff competition though from Sai Xion Konchen from Thailand and Marcel Hugh of Switzerland. Hugh, the world record holder at this event. Weir came off the final bend in second place but managed to power his way through and hold off the late challenge from Hugh. It was Weir who completed a hat-trick of gold medals. 137.63 seconds for him. Hugh in second with Congen in third. There was clearly tension in the air before the final of the men's 100 meters T44 class. Alan Oliveira overbalancing before the start. He'd won the 200 meters. At the second time of asking, they got away, and the world record holder Johnny Peacock of Great Britain stormed to victory, leaving Oscar Pistorius of South Africa in fourth place. Peacock's time, 10.90 seconds, a new Paralympic record, Richard Brown in second, and Arnu Fari in third. XL North Arena 1, it's the women's team, classification 6 to 10, quarter-final stage, Brazil versus Poland. The Poland will be clear favourites here. And they've got Natalia Partica, of course, who won the singles there. She is on the right of screen at the moment. It's 1-0 uh, to Brazil, but that is now levelling it up at one all. Poland have made it one all. They went on. Natalia took the next game. And now it's Carolina Peck against Jane Rodriguez. And Rodriguez nets it, and that is 3-1 in favour of Poland. Next matchup is the men's team, class 9 and 10, quarter-final stage. China versus the Netherlands. Matched up first is uh, Ma Lin against Gerben last. Gerben last, and he misses that chance. And Ma Lin takes that game. We move forward again to uh, Yang against Gerben last, and Yang is the victor there. So People's Republic of China win by 3-0. It's the semi-final stage of the men's team class three and they're in wheelchairs, little wave there from the Chinese team and it's uh, Feng Peng Feng against Kim Jin Sung, the start and Jin Sung nets it so that is the first one to Feng Peng Feng and China. We've got Feng Peng Feng again, the next matchup and that will be against Kim Jong Suk. There we go and that one goes long and Kyung Suk gives up that one it's 3-0 to China, they go through to the finals. The second semi-final of the men's team class three to decide who goes through to play China is Germany or France. Germany with uh, on the left of camera, as we see now, and that ball is very high, and a miss from the French player Florian Merian means the first game, first match to Germany. 
Next one up is Thomas Schmidberger against Jean-Philippe Robin. And the German crowd here really supporting well. This is an important matchup. Jean-Philippe gets it away, but ooh, and that's really great recovery there by Schmidberger. He takes that game and that match. It's 2-0 in favor of Germany. Third one up is again Thomas Schmidberger against Florian Merian. And the German supporters really excited by this. Good uh, backhand spin. And again, another drive off the forehand. And that's Thomas Schmidberger winning the match for Germany. Another glorious day at the Olympic Park. And inside that Olympic Park is the Aquatic Center. We've got 15 finals this evening. And the 200 meters individual medley, SM9 class, four lengths of the pool. Watch out particularly for number four in lane four, Matthew Cowdrey. He has been absolutely stunning over this competition. Eight goals from Athens and Beijing, and he's got another one here. Three goals prior to this, he's picked up another one. Four gold medals now, and there the fingers go up. The boy from Ashford has won the gold again. Matthew Cowdrey from Kalina from Morlachi. One of the great stars ever of the Paralympic Games, the women's 200 meters IM, it's the SM9 class. And involved in this is Natalie de Toy, and she has been a star. This is her last games, 10 gold medals in Athens and Beijing, 12 world championship records. Just look at her go, five world records altogether. She's won two here in London, and that's her third. She's picked it up there in a time of 2.34.22. In second place was Stephanie Millward of Great Britain, and also from Great Britain, Louise Watkin was in third. Next race is the 400 metres freestyle, S7 class, eight lengths of the pool. And in fact, we've got in lane four, Joseph Craig of Great Britain, the Chinese uh, swimmer, Pan Xiyun is going to be a real big opposition. But just look at Joseph Craig going at the moment. He's only had a fourth and the seventh here in London, but he's going to really, really push the boy from China, Pan Xiyun is working hard, but I don't think he's going to catch Joseph Craig. And this is a very, very impressive performance. In fact, Craig had the world record earlier in the day and he's done it again. 4.42.81, he's beaten the old record by three seconds. The boy from South Tyneside has got the gold medal. Pan Xiyun for China in second, Gladkov in third. The women's 400 meters freestyle, S7, eight lengths of the pool once again. And here we have one of the great stars of the whole Paralympic Games. Six events, six golds here in London, and that Jacqueline Frenet, just look at her go. The Australian 20-year-old from South Brisbane is absolutely in a class of her own. She has got a superb, superb stroke. And just look at the distance there. Her father and grandfather were great coaches. She was awarded the Australian Institute of Sports uh, Scholarship, and just Look at her come to the wall there. It's another world record time, 4.59.02 for Jacqueline Frenet. She has won her seventh gold medal. Courtney Jordan was second for the USA. Great Britain's Susanna Rogers was third. The men's 100 meters breaststroke, SB14 category. And here we have the Japanese star, Yasuhiro Tanaka. He will be expecting a big, big performance here in the breaststroke. The boy who suffers from autism really is in a class of his own here. The Hakuyu Swimmers Club will be celebrating here. It's a great touch, and it's another world record. 1.06.69, and that was very impressive. Yasuhiro Tanaka from Pavlenko in second, and Mark Evers of the Netherlands in third. 100 meters breaststroke for women, SB14 class. And Michelle Alonso Morales of Spain. She has the Paralympic Games record of 118.78. We'll see whether or not she can actually perform here. She's in lane four. Right next to her is Magda Teuters in five. Leung Chu Hang is in three, but just look at the girl from Spain. 18 year old Morales has made it, and that is a fabulous performance. It's a new world record. It's no wonder she's excited. 116.85, a brilliant performance, a new world record. Magda Tortes was second, and Leung Chu Hang third.
the men's 50 meters backstroke S4 category and we look out particularly for one phrase here he is in fact coming in now quite an extraordinary guy he at the age of five he lost uh, two arms and a left leg but that has not affected his life I can tell you he was a winner in Sydney a winner in Athens a winner in Beijing and now a winner in London four gold medals 45 75 is he celebrating or what Mexico's race is the winner Lichikin was in second Sanchez Martinez was third the women's 50 meters backstroke s4 category and uh, well the lady that we'll be looking out for particularly is 32 year old Lisette Tunison in lane four and here she comes very very strongly seventh and eighth already in this week but there she gets her first gold medal a great great performance and just look at it what it means to her fantastic 32 first gold Tunison from Garcia from Bai Juan The men's 100 meters freestyle S8 category, two lengths of the pool. And we look out particularly in lane five for the boy from the Zhejiang province in China. And in fact, he is showing ahead at the moment. Although, wow, no, it looks like Tarasov has got the lead. But coming down this final length now, the 22 year old Wang Yinan really absolutely pulls through the water, hits the wall. And it's another world record time 56.58. And it's also a record for the European uh, swimmer, Tarasov. Lysenkov, also of Russia, was in third. The 100 meters freestyle S8 category for women. One of the stars of the Paralympic pool, Jessica Long, is in this one. She is in lane four. The 20 year old from the USA started out life in Siberia that was then adopted, taken to the USA, and has been a gold medalist in so many events. Seven golds in Athens and Beijing, 16 world records, and she comes home so well for a fifth gold medal here in London. Brilliant performance, Jessica Long. Heather Fredrickson of Great Britain was second, and Madison Elliott of Australia was in third place overall. Absolutely superb from Jessica Long. The men's 50 meters backstroke S1 category. This is the most severely disabled category, so you will see they will take a lot longer. Christos Tampaxis, who is in lane five, is the world record holder at 120.01. But just look at this guy go. The Ukrainian Hanadi Boyko is coming home. The double stroke, and he hits the wall now. He's got a 15-second world record win there. Unbelievable. Shave 15 seconds off it. Boyko from Tampaxis, and Golovko was in bronze medal position. The men's 50 meters backstroke S5 category and one of the stars of the pool is here. Three gold medals already in London, four golds in Beijing, 11 world records. And you're going to see Daniel Diaz against Junkren He and look at Diaz go. Absolutely superb. It's a new world record potentially. Look at it, 35, 34. Oh, yes, excellent work. 34.99 and that is a world record for Daniel Diaz and look at him celebrate. Great work there. Hei Jung Kwan, the former record holder, was in second place. And Varecci from uh, Hungary was in third. The men's 100 meters freestyle, S10. That means two lengths of the pool. And that also means that these are the most able athletes in the swimming pool at S10 category. 28-year-old Andre Brazil. In fact, there are two boys from Brazil. We've also got uh, Felipe Rodriguez as well. But it looks like Andre Brazil comes home. He is the world record holder in this. He's got two golds already before this race. That makes it his third. And the physiotherapist from Brazil, Andre Brazil, wins it. Felipe Andrews was in second. And Andrew Pasterfield in third. The women's 100 meters freestyle, again, S10 categories. So the most able... Although uh, Sophie Pasco in four, 19 years old, is without a left leg. She lost that in a, a motor mower accident and when she was two years old. But just look at that beautiful, beautiful, strong stroke. Oh, it's going to be tight here, though. Elodie Lorandi comes up. Oh, but that's very clever from Sophie Pasco. Underneath the water, she reached and she just squeezed home. 100.89. It's a new Paralympic Games record. Pasco from Lorandi from Summer Mortimer.
It's the men's 100 metres butterfly, S11, that's for the visually impaired. It's two lengths of the pool, and we're particularly interested in Viktor Smirnov in lane six. He has got five golds from Athens, three bronze from Beijing. He's a world champion on six occasions. But here in London, only a third, a fourth, and a sixth place. But just look at him come now. There will be a little touch from the tappers, and he's, oh, he just makes it. Just makes it. Viktor Smirnov wins it. 1-0-3-32. And Hamid is second. Kimura is third. Is in. The motor racing circuit at Brands Hatch was the venue for the Paralympic road cycling. First up, the men's individual C4 and C5 road race with 31 riders entered in the race. Some of the favorites included the highly decorated Yuri Jezik of the Czech Republic, former world champion Michael Gallagher of Australia, and Yegor Dementiev of the Ukraine. The race was 80 kilometers in length. The riders would need to complete 10 full laps around the scenic Brands Hatch race course and countryside. Midway through the race, 38-year-old veteran rider Solito Gore of Brazil would set the pace. Gore had previous success in road races. He won gold at the 2009 and 2010 World Championships. As the race wore on, Gore fell back and the medal contenders became clear. They included Michael Gallagher of Australia and Yegor Dementiev of the Ukraine. Gallagher won a bronze medal the day before in his time trial. The 33-year-old Australian also took home gold earlier in the week at the indoor track in individual pursuits. Dementiev, the 25-year-old Ukrainian, had won a gold medal one day earlier in his time trial. He was looking to make it two golds in two days. Entering the final eight kilometers, Dementiev made his move, breaking away from the others. Coming down the stretch, Dementiev crossed the finish line in a time of one hour, 55 minutes and 38 seconds. He finished 10 seconds ahead of Liu Xinyang of China. The Italian Michel Pitacolo placed third. Dementiev collected his second gold medal in as many days. For Sin Young, this was his fifth medal of the games, his second silver to go with the gold and two bronze, while Peter Colo earned his first ever Paralympic medal.
Next up, the women's individual C1 to C3 road race with nine riders entered in the competition. The ones to watch included the world champions Jamie Paris of Australia, Allison Jones of the United States, and Denise Schindler of Germany. In this race, the riders would circle the Brands Hatch course six times for a total distance of 48 kilometers. One of the early casualties was Yin He of China, who took a spill rounding a sharp curve near the bottom of a hill. As the race wore on, four of the riders took charge and took the lead. 24-year-old Teresa Dipoldova of the Czech Republic, a former swimmer who competed in the Paralympic Games in 2004 and 2008, she won silver in her individual time trial a day earlier. The 28-year-old American Allison Jones was a former five-time world champion in cycling she was also a Paralympic skier. Jones won gold a day earlier in her individual time trial. 24-year-old Sini Zheng of China, who was peaking at the right time, was also in the lead pack. Zheng made headlines earlier in the week inside the velodrome when she set a world record to win gold in the individual track pursuit. Also in the lead pack, 26-year-old German cyclist Denise Schindler. She was a world champion in the C3 classification. As the leaders reached the final eight kilometers, the Czech rider Dipoldova fell behind. The race was down to three riders, the Chinese rider Zheng, the American rider Jones, and the German rider Schindler and it would be Zheng who would take the lead and would be on her way to gold. Zheng would win the race in one hour, 29 minutes and two seconds. Schindler would finish nine seconds behind, barely edging out Jones at the finish line. For Zheng, this was her third medal at the games, her second gold. Schindler earned her first ever Paralympic medal, a silver, while Jones picked up her second bronze medal to go along with her previous gold. Paralympic road cycling continued at the scenic Brands Hatch Racing Circuit. First up was the men's individual C1 to C3 road race. Two minutes later, it was the start of the women's C4 to C5 road race. An early casualty in the men's race was Colin Lynch of Ireland, who took a spill while trying to navigate a tight corner. Sarah's story was the story. Despite starting two minutes after the men, she caught up to the men's leaders on the second lap and briefly took the lead. It was determined that Story was getting an advantage being able to draft and ride among the men, so race officials slowed down the men to allow Story to go ahead. <laughs> to the delight of the British fans, the 34-year-old Story won her fourth gold medal of the games when she crossed the finish line more than seven minutes ahead of her rivals. The former Paralympic swimmer earned a record-time 11th gold medal.
The men's race ended with a massive rush at the end. Roberto Bardina of Italy crossed the line first, barely ahead of several others to earn the gold medal. Soon after the men finished, the rest of the women crossed the line, including Poland's Anna Harkowska, who took silver, and American Kelly Crowley took home the bronze.